we did a Kickstarter. God, I think it was almost like four or five years ago. Like really, when Kickstarter was almost new, you know. And we kind of jumped on that bandwagon, and we uh, much much like when you jump on a bandwagon, we fell off of it. And yeah, <laughs> and it it's, we, it's a learning. It's a it's a big yeah. learning curve. It's yeah, well, yeah. Like, and there's, and there's even a lot to it, you know. Even from when we did our other one to this one, it, things are ten times better structured and organized and like i'm like oh yeah this is actually now a business whereas beforehand mm -hmm. you know it was uh, three guys in their garage you know offering up this idea um so i mean i'm, I'm super excited are, about this yeah. yeah and i see that fans are running the kickstarter because a lot of shops are gone uh yeah. well, obviously obviously there's no shows this year you know there there's lots of reasons that people are turning to kickstarter and uh like indiegogo like for different types of campaigns to um, find their to find their books, find your stuff. Yeah, you go restricted, yeah. restricted creator. It's like you're selling instead of selling, you know, A to C. You know, you're, you're selling straight to the consumer, straight to the collector. Which is, you know, there's, there's there's some silver linings that come out of this whole situation of us all being trapped in our houses. <laughs> you know, because we're learning new tricks, we're learning new ways of doing business, we're learning new ways of getting our product out to people who would like to. And plus, they get to interact. Like I like that. I like the idea of being able to interact with the creator of a book that I'm buying the book from. That's kind of yeah. to me. That's really cool. So I can understand why they would think it might be cool. You know, when we also sell stuff, and I try to make myself real available to everybody. Because, like I said, I'm just I get, I'm just a fan that happens to drop. So I'm, I just got I just got myself over here in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I um like I said. I, like we might see shows at the end of the year. I, I do think that's actually a possibility. Yeah. Um, but regard, regardless, I think I think the best thing about the whole Kickstarter thing to me is this. Um, one of the big things that was holding, I think, comics from growing from being a bigger industry is the distribution. <laughs> I know you guys aren't going to... Yeah. I, I, I realize that... That, no, that, that's, 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 that, that is this... You're, you're hitting a nail on the head. You have no idea. Oh no, I, I do have an idea that I, 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 I really really do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You oh, guys yeah. might not be able to say a word. I, on the other hand, can. <laughs> that, right, uh, right. That's because yeah. that's because see, I don't have any skin in the game, so I can make my comment. Let's just say you've had me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, nothing. Not not at all. No, no. But but my in, point is in the though, '90s we used to have. 30 distributors that yeah, absolutely no yeah 30. yeah that's that's what I, I when i started doing this company you know we there was there was still at least four or five decent, decent distributors when i started committed in 99. Mm -hmm. i mean diamond didn't really swallow everybody up until about 2004 2005. yeah and, and, yeah. and so you've had for, so you've had this this somehow miraculously the fact that comics still existed through this actually the, is is the yeah. Miracle is actually a small <laughs> miracle, actually. Yeah, I agree. But what's happening? What's what's happening now is um, DC actually, I thought, took a very bold step last year and said, "You know, we're not doing Diamond anymore." Now, whatever you might think about what they did, that's another story, <laughs> right? Right. That's not, but it's, but, 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 listen, there used to be a has DC done something stupid counter? We all know it. We all looked at it. We all watched it. We all laughed and cried. Uh, and yeah. Cried. Right, but the thing about this is, Phil has disappeared from the screen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna keep on going this way. <laughs> but, 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 but the thing is, but the best thing about what happened was, as Phil just keeps fluffing, right? right? Yeah. I bought these. I bought these new wheels for my chair. You have no idea. No, yeah. How good these yeah. wheels are. They're, they're yeah. like rollerblade wheels on my chair. Oh, but, but 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 here's but here's what I think. Okay, so the thing about what's happened now is because we're dealing directly with the consumer, it has put an interesting question on distribution. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a choke point, and that's well, a very it, interesting. It, so so you have to be really careful with that statement because it is and it isn't. Okay, yeah. so so one of the things that because I've done all three sides of the fence right so right. i've been a retailer i'm i'm currently a publisher and i've worked with distributors and i've worked without distributors mm -hmm. and so and i've gone directly to consumers and that kind of stuff so distributors are still exceptionally vital to an industry's growth 
if it chooses to nurture that growth. Mm -hmm. So because as a company going straight to your consumer, one, your your target base is always going to be limited, always, mm -hmm. because you cannot reach as many people as a wider net of a, of a distributor can do because that distributor has uh, relationships and interactions mm -hmm. with a wider group of people. Um, you can reach different people by going straight to the consumer. And that's one of the reasons why Boom went berserker Kickstarter. Boom has the finances to actually make that book. In reality, if Keanu Reeves wanted to pull $8 out of his pocket, he could pay for the entire thing himself and get it entirely done. But what they wanted to do, or at least what their press release said they wanted to do, uh, was they wanted to reach people who would not walk into a comic book store. So by using a distributor that is a direct market distributor, you then are limiting where the exposure of those products will be. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, like, and that's one of the reasons why the exclusivity deals that Diamond implemented in the early 2000s or mid 2000s um, were bad for the industry as a whole. It wasn't the single distributor concept. It was you could only get your products for Superman here. You can only get your product for, for um, Wolverine here. So that was the problem because then even after Friendly Franks, Capital City, Moondogs, even after all these distributors, Heroes World went under, there were other distributors, small distributors out there that would still get a small amount of DC books and sell them off to the, the stores that couldn't qualify for a Diamond account or they couldn't qualify or they didn't do enough reorders. They just needed a couple issues reordered. So you still had companies like Cold Cut out there that were actually fulfilling that thing. When the exclusivity deals went into place, they put all those guys out of business because they essentially said, no, you can't distribute the number one product. So that's, that's where the big problem arose. And that's also one of the reasons why I look at what DC did and I said, did you learn nothing from Marvel and Revlon in the mid nineties when they and, purchased and, Heroes and, World? And, and that, that's why, that's why, that's why I did the, the DC yeah. something stupid counter. Because yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I definitely saw the, how do I put this? The warning signs are there. We'll just leave it yeah. at that. The yeah. warning signs are there. But, yeah. But, but what they essentially did by taking away the diamond, like they turned around and made a different exclusivity deal. They should have not renewed their exclusivity deal with diamond. And then gone to Lunar and gone to CBS and said, hey, guys, you guys can also carry DC books. And now retailers, you can order from any of these three distributors. Yes. That would have been the smart play. And that would have actually helped grow the industry. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. because, you know, one of the things that me as a growing up and something like that, I discovered comic books way before there were comic book stores. I discovered comic books at my local um, stationery store on the spinner rack, mm -hmm. right? Bent corners and all, you know. <laughs> and every single kid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as soon as you, you know, and I understand the whole concept of the direct market stores. I like that model. No, no sure. But but they should never have taken them out of the mass market stores. No, no. And that was one of the things why it was such a big deal when, and I find it very ironic that it was DC who took this giant step and put their comics in Walmart. And I was like, that's an awesome idea. That's great. Wait, what do you mean they're only books you can get in Walmart? What do you mean it's just reprint stuff? What do you mean it's you're 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 destroying the entire purpose of doing this? This is exactly this, yeah. this is also the same 